Hey, welcome back, Dr. Dave again. In the last video I did, I spoke uh, very specifically on what is health, what is well-being, and if you haven't seen that, make sure to go back because that's super, super important. And in this video, what I'm gonna go through is a system that I developed for myself because I needed it. Let's be honest, we all need a system to follow. Uh, but there was a system that I had to figure out the hard way uh, because I was told, just like you, I was told what health was, but in a, the wrong way. And I had to go about the process of, number one, understanding what the definition of health was. And if again, if you haven't seen that, go back to the last video that I sent out and make sure to, to dive into that first. And then once you understand truly what you, un when you understand what health truly is, when you have a new definition of health, the, the real, the true definition of health, which is a holistic perspective of health, now you'll know, okay, well, I need, to, I, need to, I need to really focus on where energy is coming from, how it's moving through me, and then how ultimately I'm, I'm allowing it to, to move out of me as well. Because if you can get energy in, through, and out of you and allow for the movement of that, then you are gonna optimize for function, and then ultimately, because of this, you're gonna optimize for well-being and health. And that's, all, that's literally all health is. You just have to get out of the way. You get, yeah, you gotta do the work to make sure you're getting the energy in and, and allowing to to move through you, but ultimately you've got to make sure that, that your, your mind, body, and spirit are, are tapped in, tuned in, turned on so that you can be the healthiest version of yourself. So in this video, I'm going to go through a, a simple process that you can do each day, just easy, 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 simple stuff you can do each day to really focus on working in energy and then ultimately working out. That's what we want to do because we think about health. We think, oh, I got to work out. Oh, I, got to, oh, I got to go to the gym. I'm gonna go to the gym, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be strong. And if I'm strong, if I'm skinny, right? If I lose that 30 pounds, then I'm gonna be healthy, right? If I eat that salad, then I'm gonna be healthy. Well, yeah, sort of, kind of, you know, like kind of from like a, a side perspective, but it's not, that's not the truth, right? Again, we know what health truly is. Health is a matter of function and, and function is a matter of allowing for the energy to flow in, through, and out of you. And that's it, just allow for the cycle to go. So. These are the things that I do every single day to help me optimize my energy flow. The first thing I do every single morning is I wake up and I have a big mason jar and my wife will laugh at me because I'm talking about my mason jars. I love my mason jars because it's massive, it's big, it's like 32 ounces of good clean water. When I say good clean water, tap water is okay, but it's got a bunch of chlorine and fluoride and a bunch of stuff in it that you probably don't need but something like spring water or good filtered water along with a big squeeze of lemon and some sea salt. It's either sea salt, iodized salt, Himalayan salt, whatever, just some salt. What that's gonna do, that's gonna start cleansing things. That's gonna start getting things moving. You might notice you have to go to the bathroom all of a sudden. Oh man, that's, that's good. Again, that's moving energy through you. <laughs> that's what we wanna do. We wanna get the energy out, right? That's the old stuff, we wanna get rid of waste product. That's actually a very good thing. So I have a big 32 ounce glass of that every single morning. That's just gonna start the process. And it's also gonna be kind of a cue for you to go into the next system and the next steps that, I, that I'm gonna talk about. That's the first thing I do every single morning. The second thing I do every single morning is I give thanks. That's really like kind of the first thing because then in, in fact, the first thing I think about when I get out of bed is just like, oh, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for the, the movement that I have for my body, for my vitality, for my home, for my kids, for my family, for my wife, for, for everything. I'm just so grateful for these things. And why is gratitude so important? You probably have heard this in, from other people and, and maybe personal development or from people like Tony Robbins or whatever. But gratitude biochemically tunes our body in to now start to expect good things to come to us. Biochemically, we start changing ourselves. And you're probably thinking, well, I'm a negative person and I'm not very grateful for anything. Well, you have, you have ears to hear. You have eyes to see. You have hands and fingers and toes. You have a, a body that works. That's something to be grateful for. You have a home. You have maybe a, a phone or a computer that you're watching this on. These, these are things to be grateful for. You're, we are absolutely privileged, especially in this country. We don't even see it. We don't even realize it sometimes. And I've been in third world countries before and I did when I came back home, I was, whoa, boo, so grateful. I realized, oh my God, we have so much. And yet so many people are walking around, they're miserable. They're like, 
looking down at their phone. They're not even looking up. They're not even breathing. They're not even opening their chest. And they're just, they're, they're not thinking about it. But we are so privileged. So, so much goodness comes to us as humans on this planet, even still. Like, they're, the universe provides. It's amazing. It's an amazing system. So there's so much to be grateful for. So just go through the process. And I do that for three minutes. And that's actually really important because there's a lot of research behind what happens biochemically every 90 seconds things start to shift so even if you're in a really depressed state and really just anxious state if you do it for 90 seconds then that the cortisol and all the, the epinephrine all these things that are you know causing you to feel like anxious will start to dis dissipate but then it takes another 90 seconds for you to really start changing your mindset and you'd be amazed even if you just do those two things like and you start your day and you really focus on what you're grateful for good things will come to you and that's, that's an amazing thing. So the third thing I do after I say what I'm grateful for, and I, again, I just, I will literally say it out loud in the living room by myself. Sometimes I will, I will be honest. My wife will laugh because she'll probably hear me sometimes or I'll actually go on a walk early for like first thing in the morning. I'll just like say these things out loud. So if you ever see me out in the neighborhood, you'll, you'll know I'll be out there like just talking to myself. And so I'm not on the phone. I'm not on my Bluetooth speaker. I'm just talking to myself and I'm saying what I'm grateful for, which is fun. So after I do that, the third thing that I do every single morning is I calm and I just bring my mind back down to neutral. So I brought myself into a state of awareness of what I'm so grateful for. And now I just go into a state of mindfulness. And I just really try to empty myself out. Now, I'm not going to get into the techniques of meditation, but just know if you meditate for 15 minutes each day, your brain will literally start changing. It will literally, there's books and books and books and research and research and research on this specifically, in fact, the university that I went to, University of Wisconsin, had they brought in these monks from Tibet and from the Himalayas and they started studying them and they saw dramatic changes in just the different areas of their brain that they were able to tap into. And it's an amazing thing. So if you start meditating for five, just 15 minutes a day and just start emptying yourself out, just start getting rid of stuff, you'd be amazed at what the just the overall well-being that you're going to start experiencing and i've been doing this for for six years to just my meditation practice and it's something that i started learning you know back in 2015 and or i guess it was 2014 and then but 2015 i was like really disciplined about it i was doing it every day and my whole life changed now of course like yeah there's going to be bad times and bad days and that was that's absolutely part of it but my ability to go back into the meditation pillow and be there and just sit with that I was like, oh, okay, I can handle that. Like, I can handle this. Really, because we really think about life. It's not really what the thing is externally. It's how we react to it that matters the most. And when you realize that, you're going to realize, oh, well, if I can control how I react to situations, whether good or bad or otherwise, you're going to realize that you can react in any way you want to anything. And you're going to, maybe you... Maybe you get something simple for, you know, uh, a gift and you react with absolute joy and enthusiasm and then you're like, oh my God, this is amazing. Or you get a gift like that's actually awesome and you react in a poor way. Like if your, your husband or wife bought you a car, but it was like kind of your money as well. And you're like, why did you buy me a car? Right? Like you just received a car, but you're like, ah, oh, it was, you know, like that, you know, when you react poorly, it's your, that's the experience that we're going to have. So when you realize that meditation allows you to hold space and allows you to identify how you react to an external situation, now your whole life is going to change and it's going to be beautiful. So that's the third thing I do every day. And then the fourth thing I do every day is I start moving my body. I go through a process of flow. I, I, I do some just, just simple movement. I, I, I'm kind of moving it right now. One of the things that I love doing every, every single morning is just Sort of this impromptu movement. It's just not even. It's not even yoga. It's not dance. It's just like movement. It's just like allow my body to flow however it wants to flow. And when you do that, what you're going to notice is that you're going to start feeling more alive. <sighs> you're going to be able to breathe. You're going to be able to just oh man, feel like just good feelings about that. And then I'll go through a process of yoga and like actual like you know movement exercises, just body weight calisthenics on a mat. And when I do that, then I start feeling oh yeah man, this is great. This is good. I'm starting working that energy and working that energy in. Once I do that, then I start go through a process of breath. I truly focus my breath in and out. I go through three rounds of, of big inhale, big exhale, and I go through a process of breath hold. And you know, a lot of people call it Wim Hof breathing or breath of fire. A lot of people have 
you know, have different types of breathing. In fact, I will sometimes do different breath patterns based on what I'm working on that day. So you can do the same thing, but focus on breath. Again, breath is bringing energy in, allowing it to exhale, going through your body. And what you will notice is when you focus on breath, now you tap into your body. Now you're able to do or allow your body to, to do the work that you want to do. And so once you breathe, and once, once I breathe in every morning, that's when I'll go into my, my, I guess we'll call it my work out. I call it the daily challenge. When I do that, that's when I'm, I'm really pushing myself. I'm moving weight, I'm throwing the kettlebell around, I'm doing pull-ups, I'm doing push-ups, some squats, some jump lunge, and I really enjoy the process of that. After I do a little bit of a workout, depending on the day, I will say I don't do this every day, but this is one of my favorite things to do, is I will immerse myself in cold like true cold. I'll either take a cold shower, I'll go down, you might see me at Barton Springs, I'll jump into the springs, uh, I'll jump into an ice bath, something that really immerses me into cold. And why that's so vital is because now you're starting to really focus that energy and you're really honing that energy into, through, and out of you. And when you start doing that and you start making that a regular practice, you are gonna become so aligned to your body. Your body, your ego gets out of the way and now all that innate ability for your wellness to come through will start coming through. And I've heard amazing stories of people going from panic attacks to never having a panic attack again, or going from rheumatoid arthritis to, to not having RA because their inflammation was so low. And there is amazing research behind getting in and immersing yourself in cold. Now, of course, once you're done with cold, now you're gonna wanna warm yourself up. So oftentimes I'll, I'll then have either a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, depending on you know what I'm working on. I'm a big fan of, of really bringing in good green tea because it's really good for your brain. There's a lot of good nutrients in there. And so again, not 10 cups of coffee, I'm just talking one cup of coffee. You can add fats if you need, you can add a little bit of cream, something that really just starts to get your body flowing. Again, that's typically what I'll start my day with. And once I do that, then just depends on the day. Uh, but I might, I might have a breakfast or I might have breakfast a little bit later in the day, around noon. And I typically start my day at about 5 a.m. Just depends on, you know, what's going on because I got three kids and I got, you know, family, of course. Like, we all have different schedules, but I start my day, I start that process at about 5 a.m. And then I'm done, to be honest, with all of that around 6.30 or 7. And I'm ready to get after the day. And once you're there, then you're just like, oh, I got, I got all day. That really sets the tone for your well-being. So again, the whole point of all of this is to really focus in on what are the activities that you need to do in order to optimize for the flow of energy in, through, and, and out. And so these are simple things that I do every day. Now, once a week, I personally will also, also go see my chiropractor, which you might have met. He's also in or near around the body lab. His name is Dr. Mack. Uh, he's one of my, my good buddies. He's a dear friend. And so I actually go see him and, and he treats me. He makes sure that my nervous system is flowing at 100% capacity. And then I go do my exercises that I need to do, make sure my posture is in alignment and I can allow myself to, to make sure that everything is flowing. Again, the whole point of all of this is to help you understand what are the simple things that helps the energy to flow both in, through, and out. That is the key. Now again, when you have that, when you optimize for that, now your body can function at its peak capacity. And when you are functioning at your optimal level, now you are healthy. Because again, function equals health. Function equals health. I'm gonna say that again. Function equals health. And when you have those things, then good things will come. Now a lot, of, a lot of people have questions about nutrition, when to do it, what to eat, all of these things, of course, because energy comes from nutrition. Energy also comes from the sun. I, I was gonna add that in. I will get sunlight every single day. I will put myself on the earth, physically take my shoes off and put myself on the grass or the dirt or the rocks or something. There's a lot of research and science behind that as well. And so that allows for energy to move through me, get some good sunlight, and then ultimately the nutrition side of things. Now that is such a vast conversation to be had, but I will say that I just focus on what are the highest energy producing foods that I can put in my system. Now you might you might think, you know, a couple couple things like, oh, well, carbohydrates are, are energy producing. Well, yes and no, they're actually not. 
Uh, really what you want to focus on is what allows for the flow of energy. So things like, you know, fruits and vegetables, that's an absolute go-to, fruits and vegetables, good organic meats. I'm a huge fan of organ meats as well. So if we ever have a conversation about, about nutrition, I'm always going to encourage people to start looking into organ meats because those are so nutrient dense and so vital and so good for you. And, and then you can start thinking about, okay, now I'm, you know, start adding in some stuff around that. Uh, generally for me personally, I'm going to eat uh, a little bit more primal, paleolithic. I don't consider myself paleo by any means, uh, but I am going to eat good organic meats. I have the privilege of hunting and fishing, so I'm going to eat wild game, things that I caught or, or hunted with my own hands. I know exactly where it's coming from. I know exactly what it's eating, and it's, it's obviously organic. Uh, so I have the privilege of doing that, and then I'll add in fruits and vegetables. Those are the primary focuses for me. I do like nuts and seeds depending on how your body responds to them, uh, but again, I don't want to get into the details in this video. What I want you to start thinking about is just getting the energy into your system when you're when you're eating food. Think of it as energy. It is energy you're putting into your body. And if you're thinking about, oh, well, this cheeseburger is energy. Well, yeah, it's like, but it's also going to bog you down. It's almost like too much energy in a, in a, the wrong way. And so, doesn't mean that I don't always, you know, I, I never eat a cheeseburger, which I'll do every once in a while, pizza. But for the most part. I'm gonna eat clean, I'm gonna eat healthy, I'm gonna have smoothies, I'm gonna have organ meats, I'm gonna you know, eat fruits and vegetables. Things are obviously gonna increase the energy and vitality both in, through, and out of my system. So that is the key, that is the absolute key. And at the end of the day, literally the end of the day, that's when you're gonna start working on rest. And again, I'll, maybe I'll do a, a good video for you on exactly how to get the most optimal rest. We'll talk about circadian rhythm, but really just hone in on that rest get magnesium at the end of the day, drink water throughout the day, and these things will guide you into being your most optimal self because what are you doing? You're bringing energy in, you're allowing it to move through you, and you're allowing it to be expelled. These are the things that are gonna be the most healthy for you. So do these, these will, will help you be unbreakable, as I say, and use the Unbreakable Body Lab for, for as many of these things as you need. If you ever have questions, obviously, you can text me. Uh, you can reach out. These are things that I want to make myself available to you. So if you ever have questions about this, um, please, please reach out. And so you know, I hope you start taking these actions, make a list of everything I just said, and just get after it. And when you do, you're going to see a huge improvement in your overall well-being and then you will be unbreakable when you just do it with consistency. So be disciplined, you will see the results, be patient, and of course, as always, stay unbreakable. I'll see you in the body lab.